now that we have all of the other steps in place. The x location on any function where the output or the y coordinate is equal to zero are known, not surprisingly, as the zeros of the function. These are amazingly important in applied set settings. When they are rational numbers, they can be found using a factoring technique. We'll develop the first idea in the first, or we'll develop the idea in the first exercise. Okay, so basically the zeros are where the graph touches the x-axis. That's what it comes down to. When the y number is zero, that's a zero of a quadratic. Um, so what are the zeros of this function? Right there, x values and circle them on the graph. Okay, so where does it touch the x-axis? At four. No, it doesn't touch at four. Three. Negative one and three. Negative one. Three. Negative one. Oops, sorry. That's the wrong place. And sometimes they write them as a point. And sometimes they just write them like that. I'm not real sure why. Yes, dear. It says 322 on the top. Verify that the positive zero is correct by showing that y equals zero. Oh, they want us to plug it in. You don't have to do this. Just watch me do it real fast. So I'm going to take the three. I'm going to fill it in and solve it and show you that the y really does equal zero. Okie doke. Okay. So three squared is nine. Nine minus six minus three. Nine minus six is three. Three minus three is zero. Yep, works. No biggie. Factor the expression x squared minus 2x minus 3. How do these factors compare to 0? Okay, this is on foil, yes? Okay, you ready? X and x. Isaiah, give me signs. Oh. Give me the signs. Uh, negative. negative and a positive. All right, Seth, what do I need? Uh, a number that multiplies to be 3 yeah? and subtracts to be 2. Okay, what are they? 3 and 1. 3 and 1. Today you're study hall day, your tutorial day. Yeah. Okay. You need a pass or you just gonna follow? Okay, very good. Okay, what do you notice? That's different. Oh, how does it's the same thing but it's the same thing except the signs are the opposite of them. Yes. Based on C, determine where the zeros of y equals x squared plus three x plus ten are algebraically. Verify using a table. All right, so they switched our equation on us. So they want us to unfoil it. Okay, we can do that. Mary, give me my signs. Plus and, Plus and minus. Good. Nolan, what do I need? Factors of that. Subtract to give me three. What are they, honey? Five and okay. So what does that tell me about the zeros, you guys? What should they be? It should be so the zeros. Can you spell it with the e? Yeah. Should be negative five and positive two. All right, use your graphers. X. Oh, geez, Louise. Oh. I had two things going in my mind at the same time. I was like, what is that? Mean? I had the zeros yeah, and the x values going in my head at the same time. All right, put this in your calculator. Put that into your y equals screen. x squared plus 3x minus 10. Go to your table of values. And look and see, is it negative 5 comma 0 and 2 comma 0? Yeah. I got a yes and I got a no. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like negative 5, 2. No, 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 no. It should be negative 5, 0. And two zero. So look at those oh, two points oh, at your table. Yeah. Oh. Yes? Did we all find it? Mm -hmm. 
So the whole point of that is yes. In fact, the opposite of these are where your zeros are, where that graph is going to touch your x-axis. Remember when I told you we used to do this all by hand and we had to find the axis of symmetry and the turning point and all the whole table by hand and all that stuff? This was another one of those things that we used to have to find that we could use to help us craft this when we didn't have a lovely piece of technology to help us do that. But now you have your lovely technology. What is really going on here is perhaps the second most important equation solving technique known as the zero product law. And we talked about this at the beginning of the year. We just don't give it that fancy name. We actually call it property of, or multiplication property of zero. <coughs> the zero product law says, if two or more quantities have a product of zero, in other words, if two things multiply together to give me a zero, then at least one of those two things has to be zero. True? If two things there, if their multiplication answer is zero, then one or the other of them has to be zero. That's all they're saying to you. So we're going to use that zero product law to find all solutions to each of the following equations. Okay, you ready? This is how easy this is. Now that we know unfoil and all that good stuff. You go like this and you split it with a T-chart. And we split it up into two equations. We say, okay, I understand that one of these two at least has to be zero. It might be both of them, but it has to be one of them. So what if it is the x minus seven that equals, or the x plus seven that equals zero? What's the x value? We'll solve it. What do I do to solve that equation? Minus seven, minus seven. So there's one possibility. If x equals negative 7, then that whole thing is going to equal 0. Yeah. But does it have to be that first factor that turns it into 0? That could be the second one. So now we have to say, all right, well, what if it is the second one? So now we solve that equation. Add 2, add 2. So if x equals 2, then that whole product is also going to equal 0. So there's two possibilities of values that will cause that product to be 0, either negative 7 or 2. Done. <clears throat> That's it. Now, they do get a little harder. If you look at letter B, the equations themselves are going to become a little bit more difficult. They're not going to be just a single operation equation, but that's all there is to it, really. We're just adding this last step on. All right, teach chart. Seth, teach chart. Stop dreaming about your cinnamon toast crunch. No, I'm just thinking about how Isaiah thinks. Cinnamon toast crunch is the best cereal. It's so, it's the so best. bad. It's okay. You're eating cocoa puffs. I don't like either of them, so you're both not wrong. Cold, huh? Okay. You got to get the X by itself. So what do we move first? Add one to both sides. I get 2X equals 1. Now, how do I get that X by itself? Divide both sides by 2. I don't need to. Not a fan. So one value that could possibly cause that entire thing to equal zero is if x was one half. But it doesn't have to be that one. It can be this one. So then I'll solve this one. This one's even worse. This one's even worse. How can it be even worse than one half? Oh. Yeah, that one's not great. Negative four thirds. <clears throat> but those are the two answers. So if I was to graph this, these are the two places where that parabola would touch the x-axis. These, yucky as they are, would be the two places that that parabola would touch the x-axis. Can I get rid of this? Yeah. Lucas, are you good? Uh, you sure? Isaiah, you got everything you need? All right. Now, I have a feeling on the back side, I've, I've spent a long time since I did this lesson, but I have a feeling that we're putting the whole process together. Am I right? Um, um, 
The zero chronic law, this is this is great, you guys. The zero chronic law is remarkable. Okay. It's remarkable because it allows us to solve equations with an x squared or higher level term in it, as long as the expression set equal to zero can be factored. That's true. That's fun for another time. Yeah, there's more fun when we can't factor them. You're going to hear the words called, you're going to hear them called x intercepts. You're going to hear them called zeros. You're also going to hear them called roots, or you're going to hear them called solutions. Those are all the same thing for this one process. I know, right? Why do we need four different words? I don't know. I don't know. Find the roots or solutions to each of the following equations by using the zero product law. Sometimes you will be instructed to solve by factor. Do we have to like unfoil it? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We got to unfoil it and then we got to do the t-chart part. That's the whole process right there. Okay, so where did we leave off? Lucas, sign. Wait. Say it again. Nope. I like the positive and the negative. Yes. Oh, All right, Ken's, what do I need? Uh, factors of 12 that okay, one of my factors of 12 that subtract to be 4. 6 and 2. Which one do I want to go first, everybody? Six. Six. This bigger one always goes first. Okay. Now we bring the new part in. Now we go and we actually solve this. And to be honest with you, eventually, these simple ones, most of you are probably going to skip this step. Most of you eventually are not going to write this out. You're just going to say, oh, yeah, that equals the opposite. When it's more difficult, 2x minus 1, 3x plus 4, then you need to write it out. All right. x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals... So we have two possibilities of things that will change, make that whole product be zero, negative six or two. When I was making my parabola, it would touch the x-axis at negative six or two, or and two. Ooh. What is that thing in B? An X Oh, there's no number with no X. There's no, um, there's no constant. Can we unfoil that? There's a two in front of the three. Yeah. Can we unfoil that? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, no. Unfoil has to be a trinomial. There have to be three terms there in order to use unfoil or slip and slide funky unfoil. So what the heck am I going to do over there? Skip it. Wrong. Not do it. Solve by factor. Because it's still not going to make it a trinomial. Solve by factor. Plus zero. Okay. Yeah, times it all by zero. No, plus zero. Oops. 20 bucks in it. Okay, now what do you want me to do, though? Yeah, yeah, we're making it worse. We're making this worse. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, tell me about two x squared and four x, fourteen x. They have a GCF. They have a GCF. Letter B is a GCF question. So we're gonna take a two x. Um, both of those, whatever. She tried your. Way. If you take a two x out of two x squared, what are you left with? X. And if you take a 2x out of 14x, what are you left with? 7. seven. Yeah. Negative 7. Yes. Okay. Believe it or not, you're ready for the T-chart right here. What? Uh-huh. Wow. You're yeah. ready because you have this broken up into the, the smallest set of factors that you can. Nothing else is going to break down. So what I do is this. And I say, all right, well, it might be this 2x that equals 0. Well, if 2x equals 0, then what does x equal? How do I get rid of that 2? And one of them has to be 0. 
So it has to be the X because it can't be the two. But what if it's this side that equals zero? And X equals seven. Well, what about this funness on letter C? What is that? Similar. Um, it's not a trinomial, is it? It doesn't have the. It has a GCF award. It doesn't have a middle one. It's missing. It's a binomial. Oh, it's wait, missing no, 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 the B wait, term. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, light bulb. It's a fun one. Remember, it's the one I never heard before. Why drag the whole equation? No. Is it relevant? Can we make a petition that we get one skin? Yes, it does! I'm going to give it to her. How did you get pairs? Yeah. Oh, yeah! That's oh, yeah. yeah! How do you get x squared? X and x. How do you get 25? 5 and 5. What are your signs? Wait, what? <laughs> Remember when we did conjugate pairs? And what that's going to do is it's going to force that middle term to be 0. It's going to force that middle term to not be there. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're not even writing. Okay, there we go. Now we're writing. I didn't think about it. Okay, that's okay. Awesome. So if it's x plus 5 that equals 0, then x is going to be negative five. negative 5. But what if it's the x minus 5 that's 0? Then it's going to be x equals 5. This is rare, in case you haven't noticed. Usually, it's not the same number, just opposites. Okay, most of the time it doesn't happen that way. That would be special for usually conjugate pairs. There are times, however, that it, there's only one, just so you know. And there are times that it never touches the x axis if it's an open up and it's up higher. Whoa, what are we doing over here on D? Yeah, this is slip and fly. Okay. I think you better figure it out. You got a whole blank spot right there. I can see it. Yeah, but it's I write big. Well, write smaller. Okay, everybody, all right with what I did there first? Yeah. Okay, very good. Patty, when you're ready, you're gonna give me my signs. Oh, okay. Um, plus and minus. Plus and minus. I like it. Mallory, what do I need? Okay, hold on one sec. She's still right. Um, factors of 24. Yes. Yes. Five, four, uh, six and four? Nope. Three. Ooh. Eight. Okay. Now, because this was slipped inside, something has to happen before I do the T chart. You have to divide on the Oh, y. shoot. Yeah. I'm just making sure you guys are paying attention this morning. What do I have to do? Divide by two. I have to divide by two. So this one simplifies. And this one I kick out in front. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now guess what I'm ready for? The teacher. Now I'm ready for the teacher. So basically, we just went through one example of each kind that you can use for this. Okay? We don't, this has nothing to do with the completing the square thing that we did that was for a different purpose. It's not nice. What do you mean it's not nice? Uh, it's nicer than that four thirds <laughs> one was. Because three halves is really one and a half. So at least it's nicer than negative four thirds. But you're right, it's not a it's not an integer. It's a rational number. Darn rational numbers. It's a rational number. Yeah, what's that? It can be written as a fraction. Good. That's what a rational number is. Way to use your knowledge from the beginning of the year, you guys. Way to go. Before I slide this up for number four, anybody still need letter D? Carson, you good? Sure. Okay. So I have a feeling when you are working on tonight's IA, you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on this page so that you can help figure out, all right, am I doing GCF? Am I doing conjugate pairs? And am, am I doing on foil? Am I doing flip and slide? What the heck am I doing? Fine. 
the zero. Of the quadratic function, 3x squared minus 6x minus 24 of the variables. Then, verify your answer by using your calculator to sketch a graph of the parabola using the window indicated on the x below. Here, we mark the zeros on the graph. Okay, so what am I doing? What's step one? Um, write it out. You got it. Because it's the zero product law, we have to make it equal to zero. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. The first thing I notice is that 3, 6, and 24 all have a GCF. They have a common factor of 3. three. So I'm going to take that out. It's going to simplify things a little bit for us. X squared minus 2X minus 8. You better check me because, you know, I've been making silly mistakes. Okay, now what am I going to? I'm going to just ignore the 3 for right now. It's just an extra factor. What am I going to do with the stuff inside the parentheses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to unfoil that. Very good. Leave that three hanging out in front because technically it is a factor. It just doesn't impact uh, this thing. part. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to give it a fancy word in a minute. You're going to love it. Um, Kyson, you get both. You get the signs and the numbers, you lucky duck. I'm not lucky. You are. What are our signs? Why do you stop? Uh, Negative, positive, good. What do I need, Carson? Factors of? That? Good, what are they? This isn't Carson only, this is anybody. Factors of 8 that subtract to give you 2. 4 and 2 with the 4 first, good. Now, when I go to make the T-chart, watch what happens. That's too bad. That's, no. that's two T's. There, that's are, not a that's not there a are technically three factors. But can the three be a zero? No. No. Because no. it's a three. It can't be a zero. So what we do is we go like this. It can't be zero. And it's called an extraneous root. See that word extra in there? Oh, it's an extraneous root. Wait till we get to erroneous roots. Those are fun too. Huh? What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Macaroni. Erroneous. Macaroni. As in like error? Erroneous? Oh, it sounded like a ring. Could you still do the southern side thing? You could have. Yep. You should get the same thing as us. So I have two possibilities. I have x equals 4, and I have x equals negative 2. Yes? Yes. Okay. What does that tell me? Those are the points that it goes through the x. Those are the points that it goes through the x-axis. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put a point at 4, and I'm going to put a point at what I guesstimate is about a negative 2. <clears throat> Why not? Because it doesn't give me yeah, because it doesn't give me. It says it's between. Um, verify your answer by using your calculator to sketch a graph of the parabola using the window indicated on the axis. Clearly mark the zeros. We mark the zeros. We can just say that this is 4, 0, and this is negative 2, 0. What is it going to do from there, you guys? Go up. It's going to open up. Um, Negative 24. What? There's the, the minimum point, negative 24. Did you get it already? Oh, that's where it touches here. That's where it touches the, the um, that's where it touches the y axis. All right, so let's do something. It's going to be something like this. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, 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 oi. Something like that. They want you to verify it. We're not verifying. I'm telling you. I think we should do that petition idea. All right. Let's look we get at free skip. the homework. I think kids should have six days. Yeah. Sure. 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 Sure.
No, my petition is not like we just need to get half the class assignment. I don't know what you're saying. I hear that. We literally have like two months of school. All right, you guys, here's what I want. I want the first side of this homework done. So one, two, three. Um, we should skip six. Let's do one, two, three for right now. What's going to happen is I'm going to take all of the word problems that we've skipped over the last couple of weeks, and I'm going to put them all as what we're doing next week, Monday and Tuesday. Hmm? Okay. So wait, we're doing everything? No, you're only doing the front side. So mm -hmm. everything on the front side of the homework, nothing on the back side. Okay? Just so you know. Well, honey? Just the front. Just the front. Just so you know what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow there will be a video or a lesson. We're doing word problems. Okay, we're looking at word problems. There are three word problem questions for homework tomorrow night. The back is X off of that. Wednesday is you reviewing. This looks like a lot. There's one, two, three, four, four pages front and back of you reviewing. The test is not that long. Okay, it's like last time. This is making sure you're good at everything. And then the test simplifies it down. So it's not asking you the same thing 14 times. It's only asking you at once, maybe twice. Okay. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the answers and how I got them as pictures for you to look at. The only thing I'm going to do video wise is the word problems that I think you might need or might need help with. Okay. Otherwise, I think for most of you, it's easier just to follow my work than it is to try and follow the video. Oh, no, I won't post them in the morning because I have friends who like to copy and not actually, you know, do the work. We won't we won't use names because the recording is going on.